In British Columbia, there will be a number of underground mines opening up and we don't have underground miners in BC to fill those roles. There was also not training established to meet that local demand. There was no real method out here in BC. I realize there's a gap between the current labor force and where we want to get to in the next couple of years. Which means that they have to create a training program. Uh, it's very common underground in, in Ontario and Quebec. They have their own soap schools, exactly what we're doing now. We got together with CNC, CTEM and MIR to put together a program that would be recognized not only in BC but nationwide. That is something that really was a different model than what we've ever done before. Such a different model. It melded together really well. It just was like a perfect alignment and uh, we were ready to move forward. We put together um, some candidates. Uh, they were First Nations and then local people. Um, and new people who had no experience. And it took them through learning about policies and the Mine Act to getting on-job training. The training program allowed for the participants to build on their transferable skills. It started with general industry knowledge. The kind of everybody who works on a mine site should know, such as the Mines Act, the Health Safety and Reclamation Code. There's different safety considerations for every extraction method. Mostly different safety theory. A lot of safety. Very focused on safety, so scaling and what to watch out for in the mine. The theory is good. I learned a lot about safety, so I feel safe under here. Um, environmental uh, practices and management plans. There's a lot of communication, a lot of team building. I think making that kind of training and kind of cultural awareness part required, you know, it's been a real eye-opener for non-Indigenous candidates within this program as well. The program had a strong focus on site-specific knowledge and hands-on equipment training. The theory is great. Uh, you get the basis for there and then hands-on. We do have some good trainers right now, some real good trainers. So before you even got around to mine, you learned everything you had to learn. So you learn a little bit of this about mining and then you go and get the certificate and you learn a little bit about this, you get their certificate. Fall protection, first aid. First aid, transportation endorsement. Gas detection. Skid steer forklift. Scissor lift. Aerial lift. Zoom boom. The yeah, confined space and there's a lot of tickets. I think the hands on is huge. I think that's been the best because, well, like I'm getting experience and learning like how to run equipment. It's gonna be different underground though, like way different. I thought it was gonna be smaller to be honest, a lot smaller. Like I was thinking like little, uh, like I'd have to be ducking, but I didn't think it was gonna be this big, so. I didn't know anything about it. Never ever thought of mining or just, you know, until I seen the program. They're, and, uh, they're basically throwing it right in there, so it can be a little bit intimidating to them. First I was a little, a little nervous, but once I got in it and I came under here, I was a little tight, but kind of figured it out. We had the students go through half a day in the classroom, and then we brought them underground for the afternoon where they would practice that skill underground. Then we pulled up like right over there and I was just pulling in and out, backing up and stuff. And then that got me pretty comfortable with it. That's your steering over there. Pull it down, pull it up. Go ahead, pull it down. Push it up. There you go. Took a little practice, but got her going. I was super nervous because it's so tight down here. They're used to smaller equipment. Now we got them put in 40s and 45 tug trucks, which is, yeah, the high. I feel for them because uh, we got close quarters down here, you got walls all around you. When I wanted to be an underground miner, nothing really has stopped me yet. Even hitting the walls with the haul truck the first couple times. It just triggers everything that all that training that you've been doing, you get it hands on, you kind of have a theory of what you're doing now. So hands on on everything I do it yeah be the best guy out there just give me some time and 
just everything. Just get me on everything. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> bad actually it was like why spend all that money flying people in when they're right next door <laughs> it's better for the company it's better for the locals it's good for the regional economy their families are here their kids are going to school their ancestors are here they're not scoping out a different job they actually want to be here this is a cohort that had strong Indigenous participation, uh, but we wanted to share it both ways. Uh, so trying to figure out how do we bring in outside knowledge, um, but really enrich with the local knowledge as well. And now we'll continue on into midships. You're looking for what? Let's see if there's enough grease. I'm also from Lataco, Dene Nation. Leaks, hoses are all good. Yeah. You got a burn to stop in there? I think I'm the only the taco member underground right now so makes you feel like a hero when you go back home I am glad that my grandson is working there to learn a trade and he really liked it out there like from the very beginning Just push more. We really are pleased at having UGM come in and do training programs because it's on our territory, Dakota Dene Nation. No, no, I just like to make my community proud and my son and wife proud. We're looking at a very high tonnage and the only way to do that is with a local workforce. We have to make sure that we're the good neighbor I think as soon as people start seeing what I'm buying and stuff, they're going to be like, hey, it's a good to get on it. <laughs> because down the road, we're going to be needing about 500 employees here. Everyone pretty much is going to be coming through and doing this underground mining program to work underground. It's pretty exciting to be part of that vision, right? I think the biggest thing is it being an inclusive space instead of so rough and tumbled. So I think that's really exciting moving forward that it could be a more accessible job in the future. You know, it wasn't just about the training program, it was about what was going on in their lives and supporting them in, in that as well, right? So there wasn't one barrier that they could throw at us that we weren't open to finding a solution for. It's a critical thing to have to provide people within your region with those kinds of opportunities. The neat thing about this training program is that you get to develop respect and through the process, develop relationships. Other First Nations communities now have heard of this and they want, they're like, when's the next cohort? What's the next cohort? We want to get in, we want to, you know, and so they're waiting for BGM to start up again. It's pretty exciting. Every single one that I see drive by me is pretty cool. <laughs> Saying I wish I could get on that. It's going to take some time, but it's all I got. <laughs> I just love doing what I'm doing right now, it's all truck. This is the whole reason why I took this program, is to be underground. Just want to retire here and be the best guy underground, and I love it. <laughs>